logical Landau Ginsburg gravity and integrable system, and it has a number, and uh, you can easily get it from the internet. And it is written in, I would say, down to earth terms. And here I start with the formula one that you know already. So I'll go through this paper. And here I have the formula two. And formula two is just the higher gravitational descendant obtained from the matter field. So last time I explained uh, how to see gravitational descendant in the field. So formula two is the inverse procedure. So when I wrote it, uh, I thought that it is strangely looking formula. But I knew why I'm doing that, because uh, it reproduced reduced hierarchy. Now, there was another formula that I, that I told you. Is the formula with the contact terms. So at the moment when I wrote this paper, I was not aware of the full uh, force of Kyojusaita theory, but still I got it right. The only thing that I forget, what was VV mechanism, but uh, But still, the idea was that in the formula form that you had to decompose the product of two fields into descendant. Here it's W prime of X integral of X. So it's a term that is proportional to Z in equivariant cohomology and the rest. And the, here in the formula form, you may see the degree of phi tilde is less than p minus one. And this exactly means that uh, this, this is a good section of Kyoji Saita. And in formula five, I just write uh, how to get the contact term. Divide by W prime, take D over DX. I explained that when you divide by W prime, it is uh, homotopy. When you take a plus, it is subtraction of the good section as in formula four. And when you take derivative over X, it is the action of G not minus. Andre, can I ask you also to make a little bit zoom uh, on the paper because it's, ah. for me at least it's a little bit small. It's okay, but it's small. Maybe uh, for the let, let viewers, me see. It's a little bit small. Ah, okay. Just a little bit plus. Because, to, to because for me, plus. for me, it is wide. So let, let me see how to do it. You have the plus, I think, in the board there uh, on the. Yeah, here, I think. Ah, yeah. great. Oh, yeah. Oh, ah. thank you. Oh, no, no, it, it's, now it's great. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Now. So uh, here is this. Uh, relation of correlations uh, of the fields when you have this variation of W and descendant. And uh, here, and here I used a very particular thing. Namely, I used that fields uh, P are of lower degrees. 
So they change W and they don't change the top form. However, you will see the change of the top form later on. Now, now as these days in 93, people knew two simple equations that were used. First equation is equation A that I will not use uh, in full detail. And it says that if you have a puncture, namely you take an operator that equals to exactly one, then you undress descendant. I am not going to derive this equation. However, I'll, uh, I'd like to stress the second equation that was also known as 90s. It's called the dilaton equation. It's because the first gravitational descendant was called the dilaton, and it would play a role later on in the relation to integrable system. So it says that if you have a dilaton and the number of marked point, you get n minus two. Because it's, because it's an Euler number of the sphere without these points. You can prove the Dilaton equation in the formula 10 by taking very particular representative of the Marita Mumford class. M let us, so since we are short on time, let me postpone how to get this. It's written in the literature, say, in the first Edward Witten's paper, it's written how to get it. Or you may say that, the, you see, since the dilaton, then, uh, then uh, its second observable is the curvature, and that's why you get it. But this equation would be important in future. This equation 10 with n minus 2 there. So in this setup, your uh, uh, field uh, capital P sub i are the polynomials degree less than the potential? Yes, the polynomials of degree less than. And I, I use the letter P and not uh, small n. So n is the number of points, and P uh, would be degree of W. OK. And I introduce so-called uh, formal exponent and formal evolution. So you see in the formula 13, I write this exponent. Exponent means that I expand in monomials and put uh, phi at different points. So it's a definition. What do I mean by, uh, by this? So I take uh, fields phi A into different points and, the, and, the, and then I integrate them as a two observables. And this, and this leads to evolution. So, so what would happen uh, when I make this evolution? I will have W of T, what T here in 13 was just generating parameters with a very fixed linear structure. Then, due to contact terms, insertions of P1, P2, Pn would uh, change. And, uh, and we have this, exactly this, system of differential equations, 15 and uh, 15 and uh, 16 and 17. So let me comment. 
what's written here. In, in 15 says that the contact terms between phi gives an evolution on the space of phi's because contact terms changes them. And uh, if you integrate, you'll get this 15. It's nonlinear system because W change depends on T and phi changed are changing. Then derivative of W is of course phi, not a regional phi, but phi depending on T. And also I have observables that I call P and observables that I call P are also evoluting due to contact terms. So it is contact term that starts evolution. By the way, this is something that, uh, uh, that uh, late Eguchi did not understand. So at this point, although you- So that, that there was an evolution. And it was the reason of uh, his formula different from mine. So mine are, are correct. So although you use a, a different symbols, a P and phi for uh, two different fields, ah, it seems like see, they see, share P, the same equations. You see here P could be of higher degree and phi are of, so P could be of all degrees yeah. and phi are of low degrees. So phi in terms of Kyoji Saita theory. So phi corresponds to tangent vector vectors to versal deformation in the very fixed uh, representation. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. So, so pi, so pi could be, could have any degree and they, they have letter I, you see, it's a reason why I'm, why I had different notations because I started with the fact that pi could be anything. Okay. Then Then what's interesting, it's interesting that I can integrate what? I, I, I could partially integrate the system, I'm sorry. It turns out that I can integrate what? I can integrate equation 17. Equation 15 is a particular case of it. And uh, it is a particular case of the one dimensional case with, with super potential W. It is known that uh, there are no nice formulas for such integrations for higher singularities. Because how, how can you integrate uh, nonlinear differential equation, okay? In general, you cannot. Here we can because of the lower diagonal structure of the contact term. Uh, let me compare it with something. So is it because the singularities uh, this, uh, are yeah. simple? Uh, no, not, not because uh, it's a simple, because it's a n. So it, it is happens... strictly restricted to a n case, not for like D. Yes, yes. You see, equations are general. Hmm. However, ability to integrate this way is related to a n. Okay. And uh, And here is an argument that explains that they could be integrated in terms of uh, in terms of dependence on phi on on w, not in terms of dependence on phi on times, but in terms of dependence on phi on w. You see, phi depends. Okay. So I, I, 
Don't I can see your face. That's why I see why what you may not understand. So look. Phi depends on T and W depends on T. It's not easy at the moment to find phi as a function of T. However, it happens that using this formula, it is possible to get phi in terms of W. Ah, okay. You see, you see, it, it could happen if you have two two things that uh, are evaluating. Okay, you may it may be that you cannot solve the evolution equation. However, sometimes it may happen that you can find a relations among them that uh, continue along the evolution. So you may call it uh, I don't know how to call it conserved quantity. Okay, if you have an evolution, you have something that is conserved. There is some relation that is preserved by this evolution. So you're saying that. So, so again, it, it is really hard to uh, write down phi a as a function of t. Later we will write it down. Oh, okay, okay, but it but is at the moment, hard. but at the moment it is easy. It is doable. Not easy. It is doable to write down phi as a function of W. And for A and K. And, and it is kind of surprise. Okay. Now we see, we, we, we can see that it's not a surprise because uh, in the Hodge theory, okay? In the Hodge theory, it means that we can transport uh, something uh, over the space of differentials without choosing uh, special times there. So here is a, here is a, the result. One can check from the definition that, that this is a result. that the evolution system has this as an answer. Without knowing explicit dependence of W on T. You are just playing with pluses and degrees, okay? You, you just mentioned that the reason for uh, having this equation is this, uh, there is some sort of conserved quantity, which is an integral of current. This, this is, this, twen <laughs> this, this quantity is, so when I say conserved quant quantity, I mean that phi could be expressed in terms of W. Okay, okay. And, and this could be checked. So you may consider 20 as a guess. So, so if you have a relation between phi and W, then those relations are preserved under the deformation of W a long time. Yes. Is that what you're yes. However, however, these relations are quite peculiar. Yes, because it's not phi being being an algebraic function of W. Yes. It is it is a procedure. You need to take W to the uh, to this uh, fractional power, you, you need to expand it at infinity and you need to throw away uh, the ne negative pieces. That's true. You and see, is... because it contains this plus operation. And it seems like almost impossible uh, other than A and singularities. Because... You are absolutely right. Yes, the, the, that's why. That, that's why because we have uh, only one variable in this case. We yes, have, yes. You see, it's very, it's very particular. You see, this plus is not universal. It's uh, a particular case of a n singularity. See, see. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, th there are potential generalizations uh, uh, with one variable that there are called Kruchevier models that I'll describe later, sometime, mm -hmm. but. At the moment, it's like this. 
So this is heavily, you, you may consider 20 as a trick. So maybe Kyoji Saita guessed it first. So people got these formulas before in the theory of integrable systems, but it's a trick that you may find phi in terms of W. Mm. So how to prove it? You take this as an ansatz because it's a guess. You put it there and you play with degrees. The only thing that you need to do is to play with degrees. Mm. You find that some degrees, that something is a strictly negative degree and that's why it's gone. So you see plus that is in the formula 20 is related is exactly the same plus that is in the contact term formula. So formula 15 with the contact term also contains plus. Yes, yes. But uh, I need to show it too. So it is the same plus, the same operation. Yes, so, formula uh, five. So the generalization of this plus thing would be uh, some sort of good sections. So, uh, yeah. of course, of course, of course. But ability, but but ability to write down explicit formulas is limited, because uh -huh. here it happened that we can get explicit formula of phi in in terms of w. Okay. That's okay. You see. You see. But since you see, I am answering the strict question. What is the relation with KP? I am telling you, the relation with KP is this. Moreover, what is important here? Uh, is that this is solution not only for phi. It is also solution for P that has higher degree. So there is formula 21 that says that, look, it goes as follows. You see, it, it, it so it happens that we can, partially solve this system. Not solving P as function of T, not solving W as a function of T, but solving P, all P's, as function of W. And for, and for us, it would, it would be very important that we can solve the first higher P. Because now I will make another trick. Okay. So after I solve this, I can rewrite Dilaton equation. So Dilaton equation is something that I got from, from topology of the moduli space. It's very simple, but it's equation coming from there. So what I put, what I have here is the formula 22. I say that if I have the time that is P plus one, and this is a first descendant time or dilaton time. And if I have all other observables, then it produces two terms. First uh, term is K minus two. Okay. So, uh, as above, and also I have the another term that is T I P I. Yes. Because of this uh, n minus two factor, so every time I have P, I have this T I P I term. So equation 22 is a combination of two facts. The fact that P, sorry, P plus one 
is a dilaton or further, or further standard of one and combinatorics of the formal exponent. Oh, so, so uh, the term, uh, the summation over ti pi terms coming from the exponential term, uh, not from yes, the- Yes, 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 the, the, they are coming from the Dilaton equation because mm -hmm. in the exponential, I have more and more punctures. So, so what is the definition of formal exponential? I have punctures and I put pi terms there. So oh, I can... oh, yeah, okay, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it is combinatorics. However, on the level of formula, I see the IPI term coming out. Then I use a trick. And the trick is that I put the second term to the left hand side and use evolution system mm. to get the formula 23. Okay. Because uh, because after uh, after I make combina combinatorics, I can understand that exponential leads leads to the evolution. You see that in the formula twenty three there are two places where time t enters. It enters sometimes explicitly mm. as a multiplier. And, so, and sometimes implicitly in P that depends on T. And this relation between explicit and implicit time dependence would allow me to solve, to solve equation. So I'm, so I'm rewriting the Dilaton equation as equation 23. It's a consequence of the Dilaton equation. So for me, this Dilaton equation coming from the moduli space of Riemann surface and- Exactly. If you uh, integrate this Morita Mumford class and forget this, uh, this extra puncture, then you usually get the Dilaton equation like for- uh, Exactly, it, it's just this. However, I play with the game the Dilaton would be expressed in terms of matter fields, as I call. That it is the P plus first time. Okay, ah, I see. So that's why I have the equation 23. Hmm. So it says, what is going on? So could you uh, explain one more time why this extra, sub TIPI term appears in the equation 22. Ah, okay, to, so, okay. Uh, so, so let us consider the simplest case. When we have, uh, okay, of course. So we are trying to understand the equation, let me see, 22 or 21? 22. Uh, 22. Especially the third lines of the of course. equation 22. Of course. Of course. So, so first line, first, so the second line in 22 is the dilaton equation where all times yes. are, are zero. And the, and, the, and the second, and the second term comes as follows. When I take uh, something from exponent, let us consider, I, I grow another puncture. So I have another factor. Mm -hmm. And Dilaton says that if you have another, another puncture, you, you, you have another term. So each new puncture comes with a factor of one.
And since it was TIPI inserted into this puncture, here it is. Hmm. You see this TIPI is something inserted into the puncture. So, uh, but uh, so the reason why I'm so confusing is the, the Dillerton equation in equation number 10 doesn't have these extra terms. Of course, okay. because, because, because here, there is, is here we have this uh, exponent. So, so let, let us see how, do we, how we understand this. Uh, so, it, so it is because this exponential term, exponential term on the- Yes, exponential uh, term uh, gives more and more points. Okay. You may just imagine that you have just, uh, you see, here we have n. Ah, okay. So you're not considering uh, uh, the, the the fixed number of uh, so this of, thing, of, the, of course number ten is the number ten is for a fixed number of points. A fixed number of points and you put exponentials and you consider all the points then so, so, so when I put exponentials I have more points so I have more terms of the same type of the same type okay so I agree so. Uh, then you uh, move the last term to the left hand side and turn on the time and you get the equation. Okay. okay. Yes, and I get this equation 23. And then I would like to see this equation 23 is a, is a Dilaton equation. However, in the change superpotential. Ah. So, but, but at the same time, I know how uh, Dilaton looks in the, for, for the, for the uh, deformed superpotential. So it's, it's just written here. So I have the formula 24. That uh, evolved polynomial P Satisfy equation 24. So it is, it, it's, a, it's a dilaton in the deformed superpotential. And now look, this solves the system. Hmm. Because uh, in this way, we have what? We have relation between implicit dependence on time and explicit dependence on time. So you may consider this as a, uh, okay. It is a solution. So you, uh, you see, I, I had to write it. Now I see I had to write it in more details when I when I was writing this paper, so his this P capital is an explicit for, for it's a it's a function of W only, okay. Yes. So, uh, so so what is written here are functions of W only. And those W are depends on time T. So yes, W depends on time, and there are also T that are explicitly written down here. So oh. this is explicit algebraic relations between time and W that depends on time. Okay. So. So, so it is a solution. So now we get how to get the solutions and these solutions of the evolution equation for A and K. So I think I'm fine. So, so this 24 is called and okay. You may call it algebraic solution or, so it's a solution. In this sense, we already solved the differential equation because we, we have a, I would say, algebraic or algebraic-like relation between W depending on T and uh, T.
In 24, there are no partial derivatives in time anymore. It is a solution, explicit solution. You see, when we say solve, what, uh, what could we mean? Uh, to solve means write it like this. Okay, so then uh, I think we can move on to this integrable system topics. Okay, okay. So uh, and this is actually the integrable system on the what's called small phase space. Ah, sorry, we are short in time. But we, 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 will, we will do it, we will do it. Because now we are coming to the higher types. Yes. And in the higher times, I just wrote that, uh, that when we have higher times, we need to make diffeomorphisms. However, uh, here, diffeomorphism as well is very explicit. It means that you are going from coordinate X to coordinate Q. So coordinate X was original, coordinate for the top form, and now we have coordinate Q. So now the new top form will be DQ. And uh, I was stupid when I was writing this, because I called uh, coefficient in front of W prime R. I should call it V. Would I call it V? I would see that uh, the right-hand side in 26 is just divergence of the vector field. Mm. But, I, but I missed it at, at 93. Because I studied all these polyvectors later on. So what is called R should be called V, vector field. You see, I even wrote it. Consider W prime R as a generator of reparameterization of, of the target space. So it's silly to rewrite this paper just changing R to V. So now we start to uh, change the top forms? Yes, top form. That is actually one form. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it is, it is done in the change of coordinates. Ah, so I, I even wrote it here. Here is the holomorphic top form, DQ. So, okay, so I knew that it is a top form, of course, but what I didn't knew is that R should be called V, okay. Hmm. So I'm writing new formulas for descendants and I write everything in terms of Q and I have formula 29 where everything is written in terms of Q. You keep dividing the uh, observables by Q prime because they are the uh, observables under the deformation of the top form. Yeah, yes, yes, you remember, it is this map that I explained last time that, uh, that you have nice evolution of the space of forms, of differential forms. But then you may need to make the thing that I called uh, 
uh, fermionic Fourier transform. After you have a differential form, you need to go to the polyvector. Mm -hmm. So you need to take an inverse transformation. I see. So actually, it was PDX divided by DQ. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. So you see, in one dimension, one can write things explicitly. You see, polyvectors, uh, actually vectors, come out here. And you can do everything with uh, uh, new coordinate Q. And you have contact terms. And here I say S recursion relation. So by the way, uh, uh, okay, you, you, you may ask, you may ask what is S and what is R? Uh, before actually, going, uh, uh, it, it, uh, I think Ms. Tang uh, raised a question on the chat so you can answer. Uh, that. But, uh, oh, thank you very much. So now let me see where the chat is. And I also don't see Mr. Tang here too, but uh, ah, it's because the li it's because the limiting. So how can I see the chat? So uh, she asked why. No, I, I asked the question is why we consider punctured complex plane. Why we consider complex co complex plane as a target? No, why why there is some punctured points? I don't understand why you so puncture so from the very beginning. Okay, it's because we are considering uh, uh, so-called topological gravity. We put uh, observables as the marked points, and we consider integrals over the moduli space of m zero n. Yes, but the n is on the moduli space, not on c. I think. I think. Okay. So, so uh, uh, there is a map between or corris not correspondence. There is a construction. In order to change something in the target space, in order to change geometry in the target, you put an observable at the marked point on the world sheet and integrate over its position. Yeah. So that's why whenever you want, uh, whenever you consider uh, one deformation to the target data, you need to put one more puncture. When you want to consider deformation to the target structure to the second order, you have two more punctures, etc. That's why I specifically wrote this uh, formal exponent. Because I was also thinking about this, so it, so it, it was written here and the, so let me so say in formula thirteen on the right hand side. Ah, so it's multi point. But but I I hope I deform this formal exponent. Yes, it is formula twelve. Okay. There is a formula twelve on page five. Ah, you can see it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm showing the screen. <laughs> I forgot that I'm showing the screen. Okay. So there is a uh, there is a formula twelve. Formula twelve is not a formula. It's a definition. It's a definition of what we mean by correlator with the, with the exponent. You need to expand it and put uh, fields P at punctures. But, but the P is still on the module space, um, I mean, on the, on the Riemann surface. Yes. Not yes, in, for, in Formula 12, P's are uh, 
are on the Riemann surface at marked points, of course. Yeah. So formula 12 is uh, kind of the generating function. Yes. Because it's sum of terms. Where we, where we are integrating over m0 n, m0 n plus 1, m0 n plus 2, etc. Because the bracket mean that you have something uh, that you are integrating over m0 n. Mm -hmm. So in formula 12, we have integrals of a different modular spaces. Yes. Now, what is remarkable is that you can turn this into formula 13. Oh, yeah. So you may integrate yeah. along the fiber of forgetful morphism. You know, there is forgetful morphism that forgets the position of the point. So it's written here in formula 13. However, formula 13 uh, has a small drawback. When I write it in general, I need to say that under this integration, I should get not only W deformed, but all geometrical data. So now I would like, I would write it like W and the Q deformed. Mm -hmm. Putting uh, all times. It's also possible to do this. But you see, uh, formula 13 is a particular case of the general formula that I thought I wrote later that all geometrical data are uh, uh, evolved. And there are very special times in this evolution. These special times are just generating parameters in the formula 13. So I, I hope I put it there. Ah, so, but before I did this, we did this, I and Palubin. We considered so-called S and R recursion, recursion relation. You see, this recursion relation come from the following. Mm -hmm. First, First thing is uh, decomposition 31. Suppose we have a polynomial, not necessarily of the small degree. You see, I keep uh, writing P for general polynomial and phi for polynomials of the small degree. So this P was decomposed as Q prime times S plus W prime times R. So what is the meaning of it? The R term, R should be V, would go to diffeomorphism. So S term should go for the versal deformation. So actually, actually, you see, I had primes here, okay? But would I rewrite this paper now in 27 years? I would say not P, but P dx, and not Q prime, but dQ, but it's the same, okay? Rewrite it as P dx going into dQs, plus DWR. But uh, I am not going to rewrite the paper because of this uh, small addition. So PDX, the, PDX. So the reason why you consider the punctured complex plane is uh, if you deform the holomorphic top form with divergent, divergence given by V, 
And that form may have zeros along certain complex plane. Is that right? So you see, so uh, now, now about Q. Uh, now about Q, I say that uh, it is quite safe to work formally. So, so it is safe to work to divide over Q prime because the zeros of Q prime, you see, sometimes I, I divide by, by Q prime. I say that they have they at infinity because, uh, because times, for me, times are formal. Mm, okay. It's okay. So my generating is, of course, formal series, okay? So, uh, uh, so I can ignore the zeros of Q prime. Ah, oh, okay. All this construction is uh, is a formal series. So you see. Zero, zero of Q is uh, at infinity. Safe, I can safely ignore it. But, but this decomposition 30, 31 is very important. It means that I, that I take an arbitrary observable and I deform it as, an, uh, as, as a change of what? as a change of uh, super potential that I keep having the lower degrees only, okay? And diffeomorphisms. So it means that I keep the representative in the orbit of diffeomorphisms. So having lower degrees for W is, is just a representative of the orbit of diffeomorphisms. Mm -hmm. And I have to work with representatives. But still, you see, but when I do this, when I do things properly, I can go on. Uh, because uh, I can get the contact term that is uh, that it's again of the proper form. Yeah. So actually, there are two primes in the in the formula thirty three. So how to write, read the formula of set three properly? It's P1 S DX. Hmm. But namely, it means that, uh, that the deformation of, uh, of the superpotential that is called S X on P1 DX. The, 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 this, this, is the, this is the form. And I divide by dw, so it's still this is the same homotopy game. I divide by uh, differential, it's homotopy. Then I take prime plus. It is just the Hodge connection, and then I take one over q prime, and this is the differential forms the vector correspondence. Call it your favorite name. Okay. Now. Okay, so you so here we have this S recursion relations. And now but now we also consider the R recursion relations. R now, now I call it diffeomorphism recursion relation. Okay, I called it reparameterization. But it is diffeom, okay, it's the same. So when I use these recursion relations, I have this formula 41. So it is related to diffeomorphisms. And yesterday I explained it to you uh, in covariant and universal form. And here is the same formula written for polynomials.
So if then if you combine this uh, recursion, it, this recursion relations comes from the diffeomorphisms and yes. variation of a top form. And at the first part, we already have this this uh, uh, this solutions for the evolution system on a small phase space. Yes, exactly, exactly. And we are, if you combine them, then... Uh, we come to the point three five introduction of all times. Okay. Now there is formula 44. And what is written here? No phase space, no small phase space anymore at the moment. Just uh, all polynomials. Uh, and uh, W and Q, so super potential and the top four. So the system 46, 47, 48 is basically the same as system below. However, now we, we include 48. It is evolution. It's a diffeomorphism. That these higher uh, polynomials perform diffeomorphism. RG, R is just the change of coordinate. So DQ is, uh, acts as uh, uh, divergence of the vector field. Yeah. So they're, they are just vector fields. And then these relations 45. So where are relations 45? Yes. Relation 45 is the composition of the it is the composition of observable into uh, restricted polyvector, that is a function, a change of the function W and diffeomorphism. Now they could, uh, now they came in an interesting form. Poisson bracket between W and Q. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's that's right. Yeah. Uh, yes. Is, is this formula general? Is it general or just for a? Of course, and only dimension one. Dimension, as oh, you know. It is only right. And you know why? Because Q, you see, it's because all top forms are DQ in dimension one. But in higher dimensions, there is no Q. Yeah, that is no longer true. You see, so actually in this text, you can see what is universal and what is specific. So you can have these brackets. And we and we have this general formula fifty two, and now I pretend to act like Grothendieck. Take pi equals to one. <laughs> See, and you have this famous relation in. Uh, so people use this relation in. Uh, in integrable systems. And now we say, we show that this equation 46, 48 is a dispersionless limit of the reduced KP.
So, Dong, you, you need to go. You know where to look. And here is the formula 58. The, 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 that explains what's going on. The first bracket between uh, W and X is this, okay? So both Q, both P and Q evolve according to with the Hamiltonians being equal to W. Mm. So it's what people uh, used to call uh, uh, dispersionless uh, integrable hierarchy. When you have uh, Q operators and W operators, you see, I, I was actually trying to speak their language. And here is the solution, final, final thing, is solution of the full evolution system, but dispersionless. Idea is exactly the same. And here we have the formula 62. This is an algebraic description of the solution found by Kruchever, whom I am quoting many times in paper 13. He says, look, there is a solution, 62. And I understand how to interpret it. Because this, exactly this, is, an, is a Dillaton equation. The first term is the deformed Dillaton. The second term is contribution from the formal uh, generating function. That's it. So not only algebraic system, not only integrable system come out of the game, but also algebraic solution to this personal system is also here. Starting from the very different point. So final result of this uh, paper is uh, actually formula 62. Dong, you had to go. So, well, I have like uh, two or three more minutes, so... Okay, so you have questions. So you may ask questions. You, uh, you, you, can, check, you can get the paper so, of 93. So before I ask any questions, I think I have to put some dirt on my hand to follow this calculation by my own. Uh, I think it's really... Uh, yes. You, you, you. But, so I, I like, once again, I, I am not a fan of integrable system, but if people are saying integrable systems, integrable systems, I, I had to reproduce them with my friend Igor Palubin. So, but but I know that the basics. It, so I can see what the basic stories lie behind, and the, where is the point that the fact that we are considering a one variable is kind of crucial. So it's fine exactly. now. So I'll do, as I said, I will follow some calculations by my own in this weekend. But uh, I think uh, Ms. Tang would have some questions on this more than me. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now let, let us free uh, Dong. I don't know who is making recording, but I hope that somebody is making recording. I was making because recording. Because I thought that said. Okay. Okay. I have a question. Is that, um, could you? Derive the topological recursion relation from your S relations and R relations. Virginia, so when, when you say topological recursion relation, you mean you mean relation of which type? Um, I mean uh, about the descendants. Um, I am starting to, uh, integral hierarchy, and then I and I'm, as I understand that the genius zero. On uh, integral hierarchy is equivalent to the genus zero topological recursion relation in some sense. Exactly. So, uh, that, that, that's what I showed in 93. Yes. Yes. So, oh. actually, so the topological recursion means that if you have the uh, here, you use the sigma i plus one to 
the three point big three point functions, and you can derive equals to the two point function plus and, and times the three point function, something like that. Could you derive that relation? Yes. From from yes, just from your relations here. So no, no, I, 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 this, this is something that I used. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you see, I, I did the reverse thing. I started with the uh, uh, topological recursion relation, and I showed how this relation is compatible. Uh, how this helps to solve system. System exists without this relation. Mm -hmm. The full system uh, has without this relation. However, if I have this relation, it helps me. It helps me to solve this. I would say analytically. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this. Uh, so so here, these relations were on the top of it. The, there is one more thing where I was using, say, topological something. It's in the formulas like three. When I said there's a four point correlation function, yes. it's a derivative of a three point correlation function plus change of the geometrical data. Yes. So, uh, so what do you mean? Uh, how to derive this? Uh, no, no, so I mean, in this paper, I took it for granted. In uh, so when you write down the topological string construction, you give an argument why it's like this, because you are writing uh, Lagrangian. I, write... I mean. I, I mean, could you derive function? Oh, oh, oh. Sorry, sorry. Okay. PI, um, sorry, PJ. Uh, it's a bad, uh, sorry. Uh, it, it follows from integrable system. Yes. Because uh, you see, everything is already defined here. So, uh, uh, so I, uh, so the dilatoral equation follows, and uh, but 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 this equation, I would say, w w what I've derived here is compatible with this. Mm -hmm. You can also prove it here. Yes. In order to prove it here, you just need to take sigma i plus one of P1 in the following form. You can take mm -hmm. it sigma i of P1, but instead of P, but, but so you need to take this uh, W prime uh, X or W prime Q formula. Yes. So you need to represent sigma i plus one here as uh, a, as a W prime integral of uh, of pi mm -hmm. and double brackets is exactly what I mean by formal exponent. The difference in notation is that when you take when you write double brackets, it's not clear. It's not exactly clear what you are talking about. I wanted to put it uh, in a more explicit form. Okay. So I, I, that's why I prefer my notations. Okay, I see. But of course, uh, you can derive one thing from another thing. Okay, I'll stop the recording, but you can uh, continue com com conversations if you want. I think I should go now.